Back on Inside Tennessee, we're talking about voting, and our friends at the Compass noted this midweek that eight out of 10 people voting early in Knox County are 55 years and older. If young people. We're, we're in the group. <laughs> I just joined recently. If young people <laughs> care about the community, this is the opportunity. You got to say, if you want to say, you got to have a say. And they, <laughs> this is the opportunity. Uh, absolutely, please go. Uh, and, and this is the one thing that Susan and I have always worked, you know, walked lock, lockstep in. Go vote. I don't care who you vote for. I don't care what party you vote for. It is incredibly important, particularly the local elections. Those are the things that affect your daily life. It's a presidential year, so it's exciting. Go, go vote in the party you wish to go vote in. But I'm not too worried about that 55 figure right now. Mm -hmm. You know, frankly, older demographic. They, you know, they're the ones showing up at the grocery store when the door opens at six. You know, younger demographics going at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Well, the, what's really important, you mentioned the local races. We have school board, we have county commission, we have a law director, we have a property assessor. Race, one judge. One judge, unopposed. unopposed. Um, and we'll see a, likely see that school board race decided in the primary because yes. there's That's there's right. no challenger yes. in eight. Um, it's going to be the Republican, and we may see them appointed the next day by county commission. Well, people, we used to say all politics is local, and I'm not so sure that's true any longer. The most important politics are local. It, it's is what certainly, I'm to say. but people get excited about presidential mm -hmm. races. But honestly, the things that import that affect your day to day life, or if you've got kids, you ought to know who's your school be voting on your school board member. County commission impacts all of us that live in the county, and and certainly property assessor does as well. And that one is contested. A Republican uh, primary as well as a Democrat running and so those races matter and if you're a Republican uh, and you want to vote for a presidential candidate there are delegates that are running uh, and you have an opportunity to select what delegate you will send to the Republican National Convention. So go vote, look at those ballots, and, and make a make a wise decision. Susan, you got a window into a candidate who may not appear on the ballot for governor when we see the next race here in Tennessee. Yes, Mark Green was the congressman from the seventh district, and he announced last week that he wasn't running, and really surprised everyone. Now. What we don't know is whether he did that so he would have time to run for governor or if he's just tired of the whole thing and isn't running at all. But it has certainly shaken things up in the seventh district and Davidson County's big part of that. So now everybody's trying to decide who's gonna run for that seat. Any closing thoughts? Steve? Absolutely, the, without Mark Green in this race, and you know, if the presumptive favorite may be Glenn Jacobs or somebody else, this is a perfect opportunity for Democrats to recruit a meaningful candidate when frankly, most of us thought that it would be difficult to win the governor's seat back this early within sort of the trend and cycle. This is an opportunity. So Taylor Swift, we're asking about you. <laughs> not gonna not gonna happen, Don. Not gonna happen. <laughs> Don Susan, we appreciate the perspective. And before we leave tonight and this morning, I wanna leave you with this. We lost a great friend this week, a civil rights icon. Bob Booker died this week at the age of 88. He was a friend to this show. He was a friend to Don and Susan and a regular viewer and also appeared one year ago uh, in 2023 on this broadcast. Here's a little bit and our deepest condolences to his family. Serving in the military for three years, I was free for the first time in my life. I could go to any movie theater, any night spot, eat in any restaurant, stay in any hotel. And when I came back to Knoxville in the spring of 1957, I was back to square one. And then the students at A&T College in Greensboro, North Carolina, started the sit-ins in 1960. And I was president of student government at Knoxville College. And I said, I think we need to do that too. We need to open up downtown Knoxville. So we began demonstrating at lunch counters and movie theaters.